This video will talk about two-way analysis of variance. In the two-way ANOVA, we compare the mean differences between groups that have been split on two different independent variables. So we might call these independent variables factors. The primary purpose of the two-way ANOVA is to understand if there is an interaction between the two independent variables on the dependent variable that we're interested in. And so in this case, we might call these two independent variables two different treatments. And so these treatment groups are formed by making all the possible combinations of the two factors. So if factor one has three levels and factor two has two levels, there will be three times two or six different treatment groups. And this is really the importance of the two-way ANOVA is the interaction that we also need to take into account for between the two different groups. To discuss this more, I'm going to talk about an example from the Forever Green Initiative um, at the University of Minnesota. So Forever Green is a program uh, through the U of M and through the USDA Agricultural Research Service that's looking at developing new crops and uh, more efficient ways to do cropping systems. Uh, and this is some data that a previous student had brought to class. And her question here was asking the question of does variety and planting date influence the yield of barley? Uh, and so this experiment planted three different varieties of winter barley at four different dates during the year. And so planting in the fall uh, and planting three different varieties. And so here we have uh, 12 different treatment groups and we measure the yield after a growing season. And so we might take 10 samples from each group. And so what we know about the uh, degrees of freedom, we'll take away one from each level. And so we have four minus one or three degrees of freedom for the planting date. And then we have three minus one or two degrees of freedom for the barley variety. And so we have six degrees of freedom for the interaction between both planting date and variety. And we can see that here in the graph, we're looking at the yield of barley in bushels per acre uh, at four different planting dates. So they're grouped by the four different planting dates from September 1st to October 15th. And then we have the different varieties, the three different kinds of varieties. And so we can see, well, it looks like the highest yield here was a planting date of October 1st for the McGregor variety. Whereas the lowest yield was, uh, looks like October 15th for the Charles variety. And so some interesting data to look at this idea of a two-way analysis of variance. And so if we take 10 samples from each treatment group, uh, so each planting date and the three different treatment groups, we can have something set up like this. Here are 12 different uh, total options when we look at the varieties and the planting dates. So the key thing to remember about two-way analysis of variance is that there are three null hypotheses that we investigate. The first one is that the population means of the first factor are equal. And that would be that planting date are, is equal. And so that would mean that uh, planting date on September 1st uh, all the way through October 15th and all of the different combinations of comparing those, we think that they might be all equal. The second date or the second hypothesis is that the population means of the second factor are equal. And that would mean that we think that the variety, uh, whether it's Charles, Maha or McGregor, we think that those are all equal. And then the third important hypothesis that we test in the two-way analysis of variance is we'll assume that there's a no interaction between the two factors. That is to say, if we look at planting dates and varieties, there's nothing funny going on with the variety that we plant and the date that we plant it. So some varieties might be better to plant, uh, say later in the growing season or later in the fall, compared to other varieties that might be need to be planted earlier in the fall. And so oftentimes, especially with natural, uh, natural resources data, agricultural data, anything with living organisms, uh, there are often these interactions that occur between different factors. And so that's a null hypothesis in the two-way analysis of variance. And so we also can look at the effects of the two-way analysis of variance. And this is going to set us up, if we understand this, 
we'll have a better understanding of how to interpret the two-way ANOVA table. And so at first, the main effect, you can look at each independent variable one at a time. So you can look at planting date. You can look at variety. This is really similar to the one-way analysis of variance. You could also look at the interaction effect. This would be the effect that one factor has on the other. So what's the interaction between planting date and variety? You can also look at the error. So the error effect is the sum of squares within each treatment group. And so that's going to be one of the last values of the ANOVA table, is that we always do not, uh, ideally, uh, we like to have models that capture a lot of the variability, but there will always be error. And so the error we represent in the ANOVA table. And so the important thing here is that with the one-way analysis of variance, we only conducted one F-test. That was because we only had one null hypothesis that we were testing. But now in the two-way ANOVA, we've got three hypothesis tests. So we're going to conduct one F-test for each hypothesis test. And so we'll have three F-tests to conduct for the two-way analysis of variance. Now, here's the ANOVA table for the two-way analysis of variance. Now, it's getting to be a lot bigger than for simple linear regression or for the one-way analysis of variance, but it operates exactly the same way. For the main effect, we talked about the degrees of freedom. We just have two different rows for the main effects. For main effect A, say our planting date, and main effect B, say our variety. And so we can calculate the sum of squares. We can find the mean square for each main effect by taking the sums of squares and dividing it by the degrees of freedom. And then we can calculate the test statistic, or that F statistic, by taking the mean square for the main effect and dividing it by the mean square within. And so you can see how that repeats for all of the three different tests that we conduct. Other important things to know here are that N sub T represents the total number of observations across our study. And so, as an example here, our sum of squares within group is going to be used to calculate the mean square within group, which we then use in our test statistic in the denominator. And so this is a handy way of trying to keep track of all of the different components in a two-way analysis of variance. Now, it's always important to revisit the assumptions that we use. And so here are the assumptions in the two-way ANOVA. We first need to remember that the populations from which we took the samples were normally or approximately normally distributed. And if they're not, we could always turn to things like transforming the data, like we learned about back when we did regression. The samples must be independent. The variances of the populations must be equal. And the groups must have the same sample size. Uh, and so these are the things we need to be thinking about when we talk about the two-way analysis of variance, and especially that interaction effect uh, and how that's so important. Be mindful of that and understand that to do the two-way analysis of variance, we can follow these four assumptions.